In 1966, Bell Laboratory engineers partnered with artists to create a series of experimental performances. Today, that very fusion between art and technology and the questions surrounding creativity is something that is more important than ever. My name is Reeb Swan. My speciality is to pair voice with technology. I've spent my life learning how far I can push the musical instrument that is my voice. Working in collaboration with Nokia Bell Labs, now I'm going on a journey of discovery across the world to understand more about this art form and how it's inspiring communities, scientists and engineers alike. Being alive means paying attention to the artists, the engineers that are trying to say something. For centuries, humans have expressed creativity through our voices. These are what makes us unique and what artificial intelligence is starting to bring into question. AI could be compared to something like a nuclear bomb. There's two sides to it. One, that our space shuttles can be powered by this. On, on the other hand, a destructive power. And it's up to humans to be conscious and compassionate enough to do one and not the other. Now machines can be programmed to learn how to mimic the human voice and begin to not just learn, but create. At the South by Southwest Hackathon, our project was called Deep Idol. We decided to teach a machine to recreate Kurt Cobain's voice. So we fed this neural network examples of Kurt Cobain. And at first it's like, it's just white noise. And then a day later, we heard God, Jesus. And we're like, what? We kind of looked at each other. And it was, it was not a result that anybody expected. It's kind of like a, a scientific accident that this kind of thing was that good. My process with Reaps, he'll send me some kind of audio to put through the machine. So there's this new technique we can play with. Yeah. It's a lot, a lot faster. We can even generate I will run a deep learning experiment using a neural network. It's trying to figure out how to recreate the raw audio one sample at a time. Like, all right, here's part of the song. Guess what happens next. He wants to bring his beatboxing to a new technical level. If it takes machines to drive him there, then that's what he's going to do. I have no idea what to expect. Obviously, we've spoken about it, but I've not actually heard anything yet. So at first, it usually sounds like noise at first. Mm. It's trying to learn you. So this is the beginning of the process. Very beginning. This is the very start. A few thousand iterations later. You can, you can kind of it's hear. just in the distance. <laughs> yeah. I can already hear it growing. It does make me think of like an embryo. It's obviously still not me, but immediately the, the my harmonic, the shape of my mouth, I can start hearing in the, the audio that it's generating. It sounds like it's like trying to be alive, which if I'm honest, makes me feel pretty uncomfortable. It is searching. There's a giant hyperspace of all the possible configurations that this network could be in. And it's sort of navigating it in the way that a basketball rolls down a hill in 77 million dimensions. This particular experiment ended at 35,000 iterations. Yeah, pause it, play that again. See, I've not done that pattern before. It's mimicking my essence in some way. Mm. Because if, if, I, if I'm good at playing the piano, there's a thousand pianos that other people can play. There's only one of these. And now, is, is there two? Is that a creative act? Because I can do that pattern now. It's given me something. So with the first method, the stuff we generated didn't really get rhythm. If we could have a sort of rhythmic template that it's forced to fit onto, then we could start having rhythmic beatboxing. Um, so my immediate thought was a, a style transfer technique. Mm. Hear that? 
I'm surprised it's done that exact rhythm because that is one of like my patterns. I'm having a conversation with this technology, which is something I think everyone is going to be forced to do very soon. Here, we came and we had a chat and then we opened the door and I walked back in and I was like, Whoa. So science fiction actually was quite damaging to the use of this technology because people associate it with fear, loss of power, dominance, when really these tools are insanely empowering. So being a part of the EAT program, I'm here to come in and try and rewrite the narratives and see how people can work with this type of technology. Could I like collaborate with this. I invite you to. <laughs> Could this machine push me further than I've ever gone before? It's the first time in my life I've met something that's like me. I should be scared. I think I'm more inspired than anything else. Like, that's uh, a new challenge. Game on. <laughs> <laughs> So this project started with a premise around voice. My responsibility was to find a new way of generating voice, a new way that someone can interact with voice. The people I've met have led me to a very strange and exciting story that has lessons not just for musicians and artists, but every single person that breathes through this instrument. Mm -hmm.